There they were, snaking through the streets of Westminster with their placards of powerful protest held high, descending on Parliament to furiously complain about democracy, to demand the overturning of the British people's definite decision to leave the European Union. Tens of thousands of losers joined this deranged demo to stage what was called the National Rejoin March, a mad monument to the inability to accept defeat. Seven years after the referendum went against them, these deluded diehards are still trying to overturn a result that stunned the establishment and changed this nation forever. They're still desperate to get Britain back into the Brussels club, citing dubious polls, pre-deciding that the vast majority just can't wait to go cap in hand to Europe and return to what we do best being ordered around by France and Germany. In their Guardian reading, BBC watching mania, doubtless these entitled dozy dorks actually believe that we're all ruining the terrible mistake we made in telling Ursula von der Leyen and her gormless gaggle of Euro dinosaurs to do one. Well, here's the thing. Those rigged polls asking loaded questions about the alleged catastrophe of Brexit do not tell the true story. The majority of Brits remain happy that this great independent country left the EU and they do not, repeat, do not want us anywhere near Brussels begging to be let back in again. But back on Planet Weirdo, there they all were in London's Parliament Square shouting and screaming about a democratic decision they do not like. Addressed by Euro fanatics Guy Verhofstadt and Gina Miller. Here's what Gina told her adoring fans, and I quote, People are showing frustration because they feel they don't have a political voice. Well, that's a rubbish. They had a political voice back in 2016 and they spoke in an emphatic vote that demanded we leave the EU. And the opponents of democracy who continue to disrespect that decision are frankly a disgrace. Their self-serving polls, all choreographed by risible Remainers cooking the political books, are meaningless exercises in rank propaganda. Propaganda that disguises the truth about Brits and Brexit. That is, that we like our independence, that we like not getting bossed around by Brussels and we like the decision we made to quit. The EU is a sclerotic sinking ship that Britain abandoned before it was too late. Let Gina Miller, Guy Verhofstadt and the hopelessly optimistic rejoin marchers sail on crazily into their fantasy future, into their make-believe world where they get everything they want and the rest of us don't. It ain't gonna happen, it's never gonna happen, because, lest we forget, we voted to leave, and leave we did. Do you think the EU want us back? Fingers we... crossed they don't. Well, <laughs> I, I think I don't think they do. Genuinely, I don't think they do want us back. No, I think they want to punish us, yeah. but they don't want us back. Yeah, absolutely. I think they'll take us back because they'd enjoy bossing us around again. And take in the back. meantime, they're very much enjoying Keir Starmer's increasing approaches to them because mm. they, they feel, they hope that fairly soon... They, we won't be able to rejoin, but they'll still be able to boss us around. That's... Uh, I agree, happy. and I have to say, I think they're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, that's oh, gosh, the... You know what? You've worked in government. I mean, the EU does not give you the drippings of its nose uh, unless they get something back. And, in fact, their shtick is this. Uh, if you are trying to get something out of them, they will automatically try to get more out of you, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. The answer is always starting with no. Yeah. And then you have to go cap in hand, a begging bowl of different offers to get what is re a totally reasonable amount. I think there were some positives just being in the EU. You know, some of the, uh, the fiscal plans or the, the money would be given to some areas like, I don't know, farmers, whatever, uh, that kind of thing. But generally speaking, I felt like the EU was a gravy train. But I think the real mischaracterization uh, of, the, of the people of Britain right now is this delusion that they're setting up that somehow or other the whole nation's changed its mind. You know, we, we voted to leave, but we, we, we all now realise we've made a terrible mm. mistake. And these people sneaking through London with their placards, the only thing they've got to throw at us is, oh, we've had these polls 
they've had these polls, <laughs> and that indicates that we all made a mistake. We wish we didn't vote the way we did. Well, these polls, I'll tell you how they'll conduct these polls. They'll be going around with their clipboards uh, and saying, uh, in order to reverse the complete catastrophe of Brexit <laughs> that's causing millions of people to die of starvation, uh -huh. would you change your vote? You know. <laughs> they always say, even in the lead up to election, the only poll that matters is the one on election day. And I think we've had the election day. Do you think uh, Boris Johnson, I mean, obviously one of the great architects of the Leave campaign, mm -hmm. who, in fairness to him, eventually, when he managed to get the top gig, put it all into practice. He delivered on the promises he made. Exactly. Made. Do you think uh, the nation got rid of him too quickly, or rather the Tories did? Oh, the nation did not get rid of him. Yeah, he was got I rid of... I did, I did put that caveat in. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I feel very strongly about this. He was got rid of by, as I think I've mentioned, some people who I think ministers, junior ministers, backbench MPs, who thought that they would be promoted by Rishi Sunak, um, is my belief. And... He was, Rishi Sunak wasn't even elected by the Conservative membership, like mm. the trust was. And so, yes, I think they got rid of him too soon. And it also meant that the rest of his agenda, levelling up, for example, that he wasn't able to deliver on totally, which is also being torn up at the moment. Uh, after we lost Boris, all we ever got was prime ministers we didn't vote for. Yeah. Uh, that's always going to be a problem. And it goes back to the political elite looking down on the general public. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. They should get who they vote for. And uh, one thing they did vote for was leaving. <laughs> and uh, Gina Miller and the gang should remember that. Uh, well, uh, time now uh, for a bad ad. If you got a real mess and want to clean like the pros, then you've got to see this. Hi, Billy Mays here with Zorbies, the most absorbent material I've ever used. It has the strength and the muscle to pick up and hold over 20 ounces of liquid. Look at this. Zorbies attracts liquid like a magnet. You get two jumbo Zorbies plus three extra large for only $14.99. But call right now and I'll send you another five Zorbies absolutely free. That's 10 Zorbies for only $14.99. And as a special bonus, we'll also include our Micromen microfiber duster free. Please, no more Zorbies. <laughs> I mean, you're a house full of Zorbies. Uh, I mean, was it me or was it just like any other rag? Yeah. It just sucks up a bit of water. I want to know how dirty that man's house is, that he needs so many Zorbies. <laughs> I mean, at first, it seemed like quite a bad deal, because at first, like, as far as I could work out, you're getting three rags <laughs> for 15 bucks, yeah. which is quite a lot of money. But then he starts throwing in all these other <laughs> Zorbies, and in the end, it looked like you're getting about a million Zorbies <laughs> for fifteen dollars. Who wants that? It's like that thing when you go shopping and you see things are on sale, and you you were never going to buy them in the first place, but you convince yourself you've saved money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like people getting onto aeroplanes. Oh, I know. I'll buy a gallon of aftershave <laughs> and a ton of scotch that I wouldn't have touched otherwise. Look at the money I've saved. Oh, you just ditched about fifty quid, you sucker. <laughs> JJ, who used to be a popular guy, now he hangs around with me. He's learning the meaning of unpopularity. Uh, and because uh, he uh, sided with Tony Blair last week, and I called him yes. not only the worst prime minister in history, the worst human being in history, uh, JJ forcibly argued with me about that, said he was the greatest politician of all time. Yep. Uh, and uh, quite a few people didn't agree with you. Have you got some tweets for us? Yeah, so... Um, oh, I'm reading them. Reading I'm them. reading them. JJ must have been dropped on his head <laughs> as a baby. <laughs> so, as a baby? I, I think it was yesterday. Uh, nobody sane can honestly be a fan of Tony Blair. It's true, isn't it? Well, it is true, but that's a bit harsh. I already want to give you a hug, but really on the first one. Yeah, you haven't been around when we read out the ones about me. Uh, I've only got any swear words yet. No. I'll put one in into this one. Uh, JJ is a prime example of what happens when care in the community goes wrong. Stupid <laughs> JJ is wrong about vegetables being cheap. The price of potatoes, onions and carrots are the highest they've been in 40 years. What a... <laughs> 
I agree, I agree with the last bit. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly from some angry, obese person watching the show. Vegetables are still cheaper than fast food, you idiots. Try some. You see, oh. you're just like me. Shut up, you're in the All of you. All your tweets. <laughs> anyway, uh, that was being tweets. Uh, and we're going to go to a real break now. See you in a bit. just happened? He's mad as hell. It's Kevin O'Sullivan. Oh, welcome back. I'm still with political uh, commentator and, uh, very relevantly, as you will find out in a bit, former political advisor to then Transport Secretary Grant Shapps, Emma Barr. And uh, also, unfortunately, we're still with JJ and the COB, uh, well-known pretend journalist. <laughs> now, uh, here are a few of my thoughts on <laughs> HS2. It was the bold new bumper project that would link north to south like never before and revolutionise the country. An ambitious vision for 21st century Britain to turn UK PLC into a thoroughly modern nation with a state-of-the-art transport system that would unlock our full economic potential. So far, so good. But all of a sudden, we learn that this dazzling blueprint for a brighter future has crashed into the buffers and left us with basically nothing apart from a giant bill. I am, of course, talking about HS2, the high-speed rail construction that trundles along at low speed and will now conclude not at Manchester, not at Leeds, but at Birmingham, which does not remotely need better connections to London because you can already make the journey in one hour and 21 minutes. After the government shelled out something like 53 billion quid on allegedly breathtaking improvements, the journey will now take, drum roll, one hour and 22 minutes, a minute longer than it used to. Isn't that special? Ever since Labour announced HS2 back in 2006 and David Cameron enthusiastically embraced the concept despite its astronomical cost, we, the little people, the plebs, the masses, have been pointing out that spending potentially as much as £200 billion to get to Manchester and Leeds a bit, but not spectacularly faster, might just be an epic waste of money. Cue condescension from the boys and girls in the Westminster bubble patronising us as they explained in words of one syllable just how crucial this cutting-edge transport system was to the UK in the exciting era of levelling up. We, the ordinary people, simply didn't understand. Yes, we did. It was the idiot politicians who didn't understand, who simply didn't get that this huge white elephant and its obscene expense was a monument to Westminster incompetence, a monument also to political cowardice, as the more the government spent, the more it felt like it had to stick to the shambles that was is and will continue to be HS2. And now that the Manchester and Leeds branches look to have been scrapped, we have cabinet apologists like Grant Shapps on the telly telling us it would be madness not to consider spiralling costs, which is exactly what we've been telling them for years. Here's what they've done. Poured 55 billion quid or so straight down the drain for a slightly longer train trip to the Midlands. If, like most people, you don't want to go to Birmingham, HS2 <laughs> has nothing to offer you. Have you ever heard of anything quite so disastrous? Has there ever been a more scandalous waste of taxpayers' cash? As we know, that lot in the Commons love an inquiry. Well, we need an urgent inquiry into how generations of politicians and successive governments conned the public into this colossal cock-up. And since both the big parties act like levelling up is the biggest issue of our times, the biggest issue in town, why are they so quick to abandon the high-speed tracks and trains aimed at linking north to south? Let's face it, they're just making this stuff up as they go along. So it was Grant, poor old Grant Shapps again on the media round. He's good at the media rounds. <laughs> but, but, but this is what annoyed me. 
because he's going, and of course he's talking sense because he's saying, well, look, you know, the costs have spiralled and it would be madness of the government not to look at the costs. And if we decide it's too much, I mean, you can see which way the direction of travel is here. Leeds and Manchester are screwed. They're not, yeah. they're not getting HS2. <laughs> Absolutely But not. he's now saying, oh, well, we've got to look at the costs. Well, when we, as the people of this country, all shouted at Grant and the others in the government a couple of years back, but look at these costs, look at these costs. No, 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 you don't understand. It's culturally important. It's mm. economically important. All of a sudden, they've changed tune and the costs are important. And we're left with something that is utterly meaningless and utterly unnecessary, a quick, short hop on the railway from London to Birmingham. I think I have two points on this. Um, I personally think we should have started HS2 in the north, in the Midlands, and brought it I down agree. to London. Yes. Because that is, in my view, the most important part of the entire project. Yeah. And secondly, the infrastructure, particularly on the Birmingham to Manchester line, is also being used for other interconnection projects. Yeah. And so getting rid of this section of HS2 will have wider implications than just those of getting rid of HS2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not just about high speed, it's about um, having more capacity to use more yeah, okay. tracks, which, which is great. But you're completely right, the Northern Powerhouse Rail is now going to be affected because of them stopping doing HS2 all the way up. Which is a crime. Yeah, I mean, levelling up... Uh, I mean, how are you going to level up when there's no transport system between the north and the south? It was integral to the powerhouse scheme, the northern powerhouse yeah. scheme. Now they're getting no railway line. I mean, if, essentially, there'll be a lot of pretty words from the politicians, but they won't make any sense. We haven't even sped up going from Euston to Old Oak. I mean, it's actually, yeah. it's actually more difficult. Where is yes. Old Oak? Uh, <laughs> west somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I London, it, Londoners, if you not from London, you know, <laughs> this is where HS2 is going to finish. And so the old oak, and everyone's, everyone in London, what the hell's old oak? We've never heard of it. It's near Wormwood Scrubs, I go. I don't oh, even God. know if the Oyster card works on that. Do you have to buy a ticket? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That what happens good... to the people who had were forced to sell their homes? and move out the way but for, the, for the train line. That's another yeah. aspect. That's a good point, but JJ That's incredibly, that's incredibly Thank important. Thank you, point. finally. Look Acknowledgement. You do make the odd <laughs> good point. You made one uh, three years ago, didn't you? <laughs> no, um, uh, JJ's right. I mean, a lot of houses have been destroyed because mm. of it. Uh, areas of natural beauty, conservation yeah. areas, all bulldozed down in the name of, of getting to Birmingham one minute slower. I mean, yeah. it, it's preposterous. I do agree, but I think we need to separate whether an idea was good with whether it's um, being put into practice went well. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they have monumentally messed up how putting this into practice, I don't think necessarily means the original idea was bad. No, okay. I don't, I don't yeah, think yeah, the yeah. original idea was bad, but abandoning the whole point of it to get to Leeds and Manchester yeah. Uh, it, it's just breathtaking. I mean, you you used the word abandoned, and I think there are a lot of voters in the North are going to feel abandoned mm. by, by the Conservative Party. And for when we're clearly coming up to a general election, which I think we all can predict the outcome of, mm. when you're trying to limit the amount of losses you're going to have, abandoning the whole red wall seems to be a very strange decision, and certainly <laughs> pitching it by leaking without yeah. any explanation, and then forcing your ministers to go on TV and say, oh, well, this is all hearsay. When it's hearsay, from your advisers. Yes. Yeah. Also, don't forget, uh, <laughs> Labour have uh, cast the same aspersions as uh, the Tories. Yeah, I, yeah. But Labour, Labour are going to have a problem if what the announcement is, is that it's going to be paused. Yeah. Because when the, or if, technically, they come into power, they're going to have to answer the same questions. I think at the moment they are hoping that the Conservatives end it, totally scrap it, and then they can not really offer an opinion. Yeah. But Sunak, good. listen, Sunak the Snake has got, he's got a, a real That's problem name, no. Sunak the Snake, that is his name. His problem now is he's going to have to say to the, the Red Wall, I'm stopping HS2 because I'm going to save you money. But then he's also saying to them, I also don't care about your infrastructure. People in the North would rather have trains going from left to right, connecting Yorkshire have, and the Dallas and everywhere else together, rather than all trains the money they spent on HS2, they should have uh, uh, invested in infrastructure in the yeah. North. Because as many people say, uh, it's all very well getting from the north to the south. The big problem in the north is getting from the west to the east. I, I just said that. I just, I just said that left to right. You heard me say that. I did. And they just but also, also, you, could, you well, couldn't make yeah, it up. Uh, right, you used to say west to east. It's more than that. <laughs> more you also couldn't make it up that he's going to have to say this to people in Manchester at the party conference Yes. while there's a train strike, which is making it harder <laughs> for Conservatives who allegedly support him to get there. Yeah. I mean, I... Yeah. I, yeah. You, well, you know, I, half of me wants to laugh, the other half wants to 
to cry. It's well, just... maybe they just say there's no point in HS2 because we've never got any train drivers because <laughs> they're always on strike. That's why we've got rid of it. That would make sense. Uh, time for a bad ad. You like a bit of pizzazz, don't you? So here you go. Make every day shimmer with style and color. Pizzazz. Styling mousse and gel with tiny reflective color crystals. Gold glimmers. Bronze shimmers. Pizzazz. Spike mic. Make waves behave. Go ahead. Play every day with style and a touch of color. Because pizzazz washes out in one shampoo. Pizzazz. From Clairol. Styling mousse and gels. Who couldn't use some pizzazz? I'd say those adverts were made at when uh, Wham were at the height of the success. Yeah. <laughs> we I think they might date back a bit. We should get used to that pizzazz, Kev. That yeah, would be great. Think so, like, yeah, we'll definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Next okay. week. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll do that. Um, now uh, we're going to move straight on uh, to uh, a section we're calling American News, uh, and it stars a man uh, called Lawrence O'Donnell, who my producer tells me is even grumpier than me. Let's have a look at... Take it away, Larry. <laughs> Stop the hammering. Stop the hammering out there. Who's got a hammer? Where is it? I don't know. It's on a different Where's the hammer? It's on a different is it on the... Uh, go up on the other floor. Somebody go up there and stop the hammering. Stop the hammering. I'll go down to the <laughs> floor myself and stop it. Keep the commercial break going. Call f Phil Griffin. I don't care who the f you have to call. Stop the hammering. That guy, even as grumpy as he is, he's still not as grumpy as you, Kevin. No way. Yeah. No way. He's close, but he's not quite as bad well, as you. Angry rather than grumpy, yeah, but he's <laughs> yes, yes. He's I can stop naming dwarves. Yeah. <laughs> but he's hypocritical, see, because when the camera's on, he suddenly grins. Like that. <laughs> I'm miserable throughout, <laughs> off and on. Consistency. Uh, good to have you on board, Emma. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll be back next week for another edition of What Just Happened! Stop the hammering!